On January 7, 2017, just days after I had first taken the oath of office, I was glued to the weather forecast. In Guerneville, the Russian River was rising, and floodwaters were about to overtake a homeless encampment where roughly one dozen people lived down by Vacation Beach. There was no plan to evacuate them. So I grabbed my muck boots. My district director joined me along with her husband. A local clinic worker met us there. Two people that I had never met before in my life and have never seen since saw what we were doing, pulled over to the side of the road, and waited out to help. I asked a sheriff's deputy to assist with the evacuation. He declined, telling me that he wasn't wearing waterproof boots. He didn't want to get his socks wet because then his feet would be wet for the rest of the day. So together, the rest of us went campsite by campsite. We removed the tent poles and we rolled up the tents with all of the belongings burritoed inside, then carried them out like awkward, soggy logs and deposited them unceremoniously on the side of the road. It looked like trash, forgotten lots, the cast-offs of better days, but this was sacred stuff, the homes of the homeless, all they had left in the world. You know, we were so focused on the task at hand and the sweat building up under our raincoats that we lost track just a little bit of our surroundings. And I remember finally looking up and feeling a jolt of adrenaline as I realized that the situation was getting dangerous. The level of the river was higher than the spot that I was standing in, and the spot that I was standing in was the only remaining way to get to shore. In other words, the encampment was about to become an island. Something, fortunately, for now, was holding back the water. But at some point, no one could say exactly when, the raging river would fill that channel and cut us off from the mainland, with the rain still pouring down. Fortunately, there was only one occupied campsite left. Unfortunately, the resident refused to leave. He was a journalist. I had been a journalist. He had written for the Sonoma West Times and News. So had I. He had knowledge of meteorology. I didn't. He was a veteran, which meant that he was willing to lay down his life for us, for me. And he wouldn't leave his tent until he could find his cat, who was nowhere to be found. The cat? The cat was really all the family that he had left. The water was inches from the tent. At any moment, the encampment could become an island. But just as the water literally started to lap at that stake that was holding that tent into the ground, the cat came back. He took her and left. And the clinic worker and I rolled up the rest of his life into a tent burrito and carried it to safety. Within the hour, that peninsula had become an island. And then it was swallowed by the Russian River, and anything that we had missed was carried out to the sea. You know, in the moment, you feel like a good Samaritan, capital G, capital S. You feel like you have done something, right? You pat yourself on the back, your boots are dirty, your heart is full. But here's the thing. We hadn't really done a damn thing, except throw someone a life ring in a system that is trying to drown them. We helped a few people not die for the moment, but we hadn't helped them to live. Not really. And we hadn't fixed the system that put them on the riverbank in the first place. The state of California has been experiencing a homeless crisis for years. In fact, California accounts for 47% of the homeless population in this entire country. Sonoma County has the fourth highest homeless population for large suburban areas. At last count, 2,700 human beings were homeless in Sonoma County. And that statistic, it includes families, it includes former foster kids, veterans, people being sex trafficked, domestic violence survivors, folks struggling with mental health. And yet, for too long, government pretty much looked the other way from this population because there's no magic solution to homelessness. And in fact, when you actually propose a solution, the kind of people who show up to town halls, the kind of people who write letters to the editor, the kind of people who contribute to political campaigns, they tend to fight the solution. But let's start living dangerously today. Let's talk about throwing more than one life ring into an ocean of people in need. Let's talk about how you actually solve homelessness, not in its entirety, but one room at a time. Room? Yes, room. 
In June of 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom announced Project Home Key. He allocated $600 million for counties like us to apply for funds to purchase and rehab different forms of housing to then provide shelter for unsheltered people. It included things like vacant apartment buildings, residential care facilities, hotels, motels, even tiny homes. And he also provided funding for wraparound supportive services. So Sonoma County stepped up and applied for two Project Home Key sites. One of these sites was in the city of Santa Rosa. This makes perfect sense, right? It's the largest city. It also has the highest concentration of an unsheltered population. But the other site? The other site was in Sebastopol. And if you don't know Sebastopol, know this. It's a small town of about 7,000 people. It's pretty wealthy. It's pretty white. And the owner of the Sebastopol Inn had approached the county wanting to sell and wanting to take advantage of this funding opportunity. Now, this meant that I needed to make the call. The call was the call to the mayor and vice mayor of the city of Sebastopol, letting them know the bad news that the county wanted to basically put a homeless services right, site right smack dab in the middle of their downtown, directly across from a luxury retail development. Oh, and did I mention there were actually only two hotels in the entire city of Sebastopol? So we were actually proposing to take one of those and turn them into a homeless residence, which meant a loss of revenue to the small city's tight budget. You know, I believed in the project. I really did. But I also know that while everyone theoretically wants to solve homelessness, everyone universally wants it to be solved somewhere else. To that end, you know, not long after I pulled people's belongings from the banks of the Russian River, I proposed a homeless services site in Guerneville, not far from that encampment in Vacation Beach. Severed pig's heads were left on the proposed services site. Signs declaring not in our town popped up all over the community. The community rejected the homeless services and the effort was defeated. So, I knew that I was in for a battle, and when it came time to make the call, I was nervous, like I was asking somebody out on a date or something. The amazing thing was, the mayor and the vice mayor said yes. They supported the proposal. In fact, they didn't just support the proposal, they championed it. The mayor made personal phone calls to potential project supporters, encouraging them to attend an upcoming town hall meeting on the subject. So that when we had our first community meeting, instead of it being consumed by fear and negativity, about half the meeting attendees were actually in support of the project. And that's how the Sebastopol Inn became Elderberry Commons. Elderberry Commons provides permanent supportive housing to some of our most vulnerable homeless residents. This isn't just shelter, this is home. It's located right smack dab in the middle of downtown Sebastopol, which means that it is a stone's throw from transportation, from medical services, from churches, from a post office, from a library, from a senior center, from transportation, and yes, from luxury retail. This solution wasn't cheap. In fact, the purchase of the Sebastopol Inn clocked in at over $6 million. The total project costs were just shy of $11 million, and that includes the acquisition, development, and initial operating expenses. But, you know, that solution is only expensive until you consider the cost of the alternative, and it turns out that homelessness isn't cheap either. Various studies have estimated the cost of homelessness to society at between $40,000 and $50,000 per person per year. So if you take the 31 residents of Elderberry Commons at that $50,000 per year cost of being homeless, we're actually saving about $1.5 million a year by avoiding homelessness. So suddenly, that price tag doesn't look too shabby. And in fact, if you look at the cost savings like payments on a mortgage, Actually, we would pay off the Project Home Key mortgage in about eight years. So this project makes fiscal as well as moral sense. Which begs the question, why aren't there more projects like this? Too many solutions to homelessness are defeated by fear. People like you and me, comfortable people, the kind of people who give and listen to TED Talks, we're part of the problem. How would you feel if homeless services were proposed next door to your home? What if housing for the homeless were proposed next door to your son or daughter's school? Think about that for a minute. 
And the next time you see a homeless person on the sidewalk, really look at them. Don't assume that if they were living in a room in your neighborhood, that your neighborhood would be ruined. I challenge you today not to oppose solutions to homelessness. In fact, I challenge you to support them. The small city of Sebastopol is a great example of we did it and the sky didn't fall. In fact, in the year that Elderberry Commons has been opened, we haven't fielded complaints about trash or loitering or needles or harassment or assault or any of the other terrible things that people said would happen if we went forward with this project. In fact, the biggest complaint has been parking because those hotel rooms didn't used to be full and now they are. But let's go back to the river for a moment. I don't know where the gentleman that I helped evacuate in 2017 is. I don't even know if he's still alive. And honestly, the odds of him being alive aren't good. Homelessness is a medical condition. And if you talk to the clinic workers who tend to our unsheltered population, they'll tell you that being homeless takes 15 to 20 years off your life. But there's a miraculous treatment for homelessness. It's called housing. And if I were to go back to that man by the river today, that's what I would give him. Not a life ring, a room. In the year that Elderberry Commons has been open, we have helped dozens of people who would otherwise be struggling on the streets of Sonoma County. That's hundreds of years of life, of living, that we have saved. And not just saved, changed, bettered. And better is all any of us can ask for.